All right. How's everybody doing? All right, Hotep. Hey, this is Michael M. Hotep, founder of the African History Network, host of the African History Network show. I'm a talk show host, researcher, lecturer, and writer. It is Wednesday, January 30th, 2019. We are live. We know it's freezing cold in a lot of cities across the country, cities in the Midwest. Detroit is one of them. Chicago, another one of them. So I hope everybody's doing well today. So uh, we know African American History Month is uh, coming up soon uh, in a couple of days here. And I want to let you all know that um, I'm doing a lecture series in Detroit uh, for African American History Month, the month of February. It used to be called Black History Month. Um, and it kicks off Saturday, February 2nd, 2019 at Nandy's Knowledge Cafe. So each Saturday in February, I'll do this lecture series, 2 p.m. to 6 p.m., free event donations accepted. And uh, we'll get the flyer up today. I'm working on the flyer. I'm behind schedule on a lot of things. Um, and the first presentation I'm doing is dealing with the history of Black Wall Street in Tulsa, Oklahoma, okay, which is very timely, all right? How's everybody doing? Everybody share this broadcast on your Facebook page. Invite your friends to tune in also. And then African-American business owners post the name of your business here on the thread of the broadcast also, okay? So uh, the first presentation I'm doing is dealing with the history of Black Wall Street in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And a lot of people talk about Black Wall Street, but don't really know the history of it, haven't really studied the history of uh, Black Wall Street or Tulsa, Oklahoma. Now, uh, I, did a, I did a lecture back in 2014 dealing with the history of uh, Black Wall Street and a lot of little known history about Black Wall Street in Tulsa, Oklahoma. This presentation here, okay? So this is available at our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. We have this on DVD and digital download. This is a two and a half, two and a half hour presentation idea dealing with the history of Black Wall Street. But uh, to kick off African American History Month, uh, I'm doing another presentation. So when we look at some of the history of uh, Black Wall Street, right, uh, we know this was a real economic powerhouse. Uh, we had a number of different African, -Amer African American communities back in the early 1900s uh, that were economic powerhouses, okay? This was, this was the biggest one. And part of it had to do with the fact that uh, oil was discovered in Tulsa, Oklahoma, in Oklahoma in general. Uh, oil was discovered around 1905, okay? And um, because of the oil that was discovered, um, you had a huge influx of people into Oklahoma, and some of them were African Americans as well, okay? So I'm going to talk some about that history here uh, for a few minutes. Uh, everybody share this broadcast on your Facebook page, the African History Network. Follow us at the African History Network on Facebook. And on our YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotep, I-M-H-O-T-E-P. Uh, African-American business owners, post the name of your business here on the thread of the broadcast as well. Okay. And uh, this, uh, my uh, lecture series is taking place at Nandy's Knowledge Cafe, uh, 71 Oakman Avenue in Highland Park, Michigan. Nandy's Knowledge Cafe, 71 Oakman Avenue in Highland Park, Michigan. Um, and that is, uh, it's, uh, it's each Saturday in February. Uh, 2019, 2 p.m. to 6 p.m., free event, donations accepted. And uh, we'll start with um, this presentation, dealing with the history of Black Wall Street. Uh, Black Wall Street from destruction to the resurrection of economic empowerment. Black Wall Street from destruction to the resurrection of economic empowerment. So when we look at uh, Oklahoma, right? Oklahoma at, the, at, at this point in time, uh, going back to 1905, going back even into the 1800s, Oklahoma is a U.S. territory, but it's not part, it is not a state in the Union. Oklahoma does not become a state in the Union until 1907, okay? Um, so if we look at Tulsa, Oklahoma, uh, we find that Tulsa was founded by Creek Indians around 1836, Creek Indians, all right? And the Creek Indians get pushed off of their land in southeastern United States, places like Alabama. They get pushed off of their land because of the Indian Removal Act of 1830. And, and, and the Choctaw, Chickasaw, Creek, Cherokee, and Seminole Indians, you know, they're forced off of their land 
uh, because of the Indian Removal Act, they all go out west on what's known as the Trail of Tears, the Trail of Tears. And they go over a thousand miles. They walk basically out west uh, on the Trail of Tears, some, you know, on horseback. Um, and they all go into Oklahoma, okay? And when they go into Oklahoma <clears throat> and when they're on the Trail of Tears, they take their African slaves with them because all five tri all five tribes, uh, what's known as the five civilized tribes of Native Americans, the Choctaw, Chickasaw, Creek, Cherokee, and Seminole Indians, they all own black slaves or African slaves, okay? Now, some people debate about whether or not they were slaves or all of them were slaves or were some of them servants or things like this. And there's also somewhat of, somewhat of a debate over um, how some of the Africans were classified because some of the lighter skinned uh, Native Americans were classified as Native Americans, some of the darker, ones, darker skinned ones, in some cases were classified as slaves, okay? Um, nonetheless, when the Civil War is fought, 1861 to 1865, all five of these Native American nations fight on behalf of the South to keep slavery intact because they all own African slaves. Okay, so there's a there's a whole history here before you get to 1905 and O.W. O.W. Gurley, who really starts the uh, is like the first business owner there in Black Wall Street. Okay, with a uh, with a uh, rooming uh, with a boarding house that he has, a rooming house and a grocery store. Okay, you have to understand history going back 100, 200 some odd years before that. Okay, so in, in, in the lecture that I'm going to do uh, on Saturday, February 2nd, 2019 at Nandy's Knowledge uh, Cafe in Highland Park, Michigan. The Highland Park is an enclave of Detroit, just like uh, uh, Lesotho or Lesotho, uh, that country is an enclave of South Africa. It's a country within South Africa, right? So when you see the movie Black Panther and you see the warriors who protect the border of Wakanda and they wear these blankets, the blankets come from the uh, Basotho people of Lesotho, that South African country. When you see my presentations that were Black Panther, I deal with where these different cultural influences from the film Black Panther come from, right? So Highland Park, Michigan, where Henry Ford Motor Company started, Ford Motor Company started, that is a city within Detroit. They have their own mayor, their own police forces, an enclave, okay? So that's where Nandy's Knowledge Cafe is, 71 Oakman Avenue. All right, so to understand Black Wall Street, right, and the, and the, uh, numerous uh, multimillionaires that were there and the uh, 600 businesses and the grocery stores, you know, the businesses and the churches and all these things. You, you, you have to understand history leading up to that taking place, all right? And then this involves history of slavery and the Civil War, et cetera, okay? And some of the early landowners, because I've done a lot of research on Black Wall Street and read books dealing with it as well. Um, probably the best book is by Hannibal B. Johnson, um, Black Wall Street from, um, and I've talked to Hannibal B. Johnson also. This is probably one of the best books dealing with, with the history of Black Wall Street. I've done an extensive research on Black Wall Street. Um, Black Wall Street from Riot to Renaissance in Tulsa's Historic Greenwood District, okay? This is one of the best books. And also uh, Robin Walker, the historian, the great historian Robin Walker, who's in Hidden Colors Four, uh, who lives in London. He's in um, uh, he's in England. Um, he wrote a book about Black Wall Street as well. Okay, but to understand that history, you have to understand a chronology of history leading up to 1905, and then leading up to the attack, uh, June 1st, 1921. On Black Wall Street. So in, in, in the presentation that I do on Black Wall Street and the one I'll do um, Saturday, February 2nd, I'm going to deal with a timeline of history. You know, we deal with African people being here at least 51,700 years, uh, at least 51,700 years. We deal with uh, uh, some of the information coming from Dr. David M. Hotel. We deal with some with the Civil War, things like this, but we I'll, I'll deal with a timeline of history leading up to the attack uh, June 1st, 1921, so we can understand the climate that Black Wall Street took place in, okay? We can really understand what happened. And um, 
you know, will deal with what really destroyed Black Wall Street. Because contrary to popular belief, we rebuilt Black Wall Street after the race riot. See, this is something that a lot of people don't talk about. After, after the race riot, we rebuilt Black Wall Street with our own money because we didn't get government help. The businesses, the businesses that we had that did have insurance policies on them, the insurance companies didn't pay out on them. And nobody was held responsible for the attack. You had at least 300 African Americans who were killed. You had Black Wall Street that was invaded by somewhere between 10,000 to 15,000 white people, heavily armed. And the only thing that really, the only thing that really, really saved them is uh, martial law was declared and the uh, military came in. Okay. And when they, and when the military came in, right, this caused a lot of the, the, the this caused a lot of the white supremacists to back off because the military was armed and they didn't want to fight them. So when you really, when you really study this history of Black Wall Street, it's a lot different than some of the anecdotes will tell you uh, it's a really really deep history okay so we have to do so this ties into understanding the history of native americans some native american tribes not all of them 566 federally recognized tribal nations right now uh, if you look at the bureau of indian affairs website bia.gov um but this ties into the history of slavery also ties into things like the Black Freedmen Indian Treaties of 1866, because a lot of the very early uh, black landowners in Tulsa, Oklahoma, got land because they were uh, former slaves who were enslaved by the Creek Indians. And because of these treaties with the US government, they were given land. This was some type of reparations they were given land so a lot of the early african-american black land owners in tulsa oklahoma got land because of these treaties this is why the black freedmen indian treaties of 1866 are so important and and it's probably our best chance to get any additional type any type of real reparations compensation okay um, but we have to look at like the origins of uh, uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. So the word Tulsa, right, comes from the Creek Indian word Talasi. And Tulsa was founded by Creek Indians around 1836. Okay. And when you had, now this is still during slavery. Civil War doesn't happen until 1861. And after slavery ends, you're going to have, when oil is discovered, you have people coming from all over the country into Oklahoma. So Oklahoma, their population is growing, it is growing drastically, right? We look from 1900 to 1920. I mean, their population, their population uh, grows hugely. It grow, it, it swells up to something like uh, 100,000. So um, in Tulsa, in 1910, Tulsa was home to 18,182 people. And um, we, we're going to see that population drastically increase as well. Um, but what happens is, is because of segregation, Tulsa is going to be split into North Tulsa, where African Americans were segregated, and South Tulsa, where the white people live. And what divided South Tulsa and North Tulsa was the, were the railroad tracks. And even though you're going to have some wealthy people there in Black Wall Street, which is what which is what the business district was called, and the intersection of the business district was Greenwood, Archer, and Pine. This is where the Gap Band gets their name from, G-A-P, Gap, okay, Gap Band, because they're from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Um, you're going to have some poor people that live in Tulsa, some poor African Americans live in Tulsa, and some of them work in South Tulsa. And they were domestics. They worked for white people, worked for white families. They were maids, washer, women, you know, butlers, what have you. Okay. Um, so some of the information about Tulsa that we've heard is accurate. Some of it is 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 inaccurate. You know, and what I do in my presentations is separate the fact from the fiction. Okay. All right. So this is take how's everybody doing? This is taking place at Nandy's Knowledge Cafe, uh, 71 Oakman Avenue in Highland Park, Michigan. All right. And um, 
everybody watching, share this broadcast on your Facebook page, invite your friends to tune in. Let everybody you know in Detroit about this. Take it place as a free event, donations accepted, uh, Saturday, February 2nd, 2019. Also, if you like this type of information, you could donate to the African History Network, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show. Okay, and um, or go to AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, click on the yellow donate button, and you can donate there. That helps us to put on events like this, keep doing the research, keep broadcasting our, our radio show, et cetera, okay, because this helps to offset that cost. Because even though it's a free event, I have costs involved in putting this event on, okay? Uh, also, we have our, our eight digital, our Black Panther eight digital download bundle pack. We saw Black Panther one big at the Screen Actors Guild Awards, and it's coming back in theaters February February first through seventh for free. Uh, select AMC theaters. Uh, that's a um, uh, a digital download bundle pack of uh, eight of my lectures. Three of them deal with the film Black Panther. So we just posted that here on the thread of the broadcast. Is also at our website AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Okay, it's going to be 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. Bob Mines said, I asked the question, what time? Yeah, 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. each Saturday in February at Nandy's Knowledge Cafe. I'm doing uh, four press, I'm doing four, four Saturdays. And it kicks off uh, Saturday, February 2nd, 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, dealing with this presentation, dealing with Black, uh, Black Wall Street. Black Wall Street from destruction to the resurrection of economic empowerment. Okay. All right. So. Um, and to understand how something like this could take place, how you could have this massacre take place, at least 300 African Americans killed, no one arrested, um, the, you know, you have to understand the climate that was going on at that time. You had the rise of the Ku Klux Klan, okay, that, that was rejuvenated because of the, of the movie uh, A Birth of a Nation, February 8th, 1915. This is why I'm so uh, this is why I scrutinize images and media and movies and negative corporate control hip hop so closely because I've been studying media for 27 years and I understand the impact of it. And when you study uh, the rise of the Ku Klux Klan, the Ku Klux Klan had pretty much died out by 1915. They were still around, but they had largely died out. You had other white supremacist groups that existed, but all of them were not the Klan. The Klan was was founded December twenty fourth, eighteen sixty five, right after the Civil War ends. Okay, and after in the same later in the same month that the Thirteenth Amendment is ratified and adopted. Okay, um, but the movie The Birth of a Nation, the reason why it helped to rejuvenate the Ku Klux Klan is because it was um, the Ku Klux Klan was the, were the heroes of the movie because the movie takes place during slavery, so the Civil War, and Reconstruction. Okay, and um, at the end of the movie, you have the Ku Klux Klan rising up to put down a rebellion of uh, former Negro uh, Civil War soldiers, Union Civil War soldiers. And the movie showed, you know, black men trying to rape white women, things like this. The movie calls, calls race riots in the streets. OK, now the movie, The Birth of a Nation. So this is this is why I go through a timeline of history leading up to 1921, because to understand the existence of something, you must first understand the pre-existence of existence, as, as Professor Kaba Kamene teaches us, who's one of my teachers, Booker T. Coleman, formerly known as Booker T. Coleman, that you see in the Hidden Colors documentaries. Um, so you have to understand this climate that 1921 took place in. And the film, The Birth of a Nation, calls, calls race riots in the streets. The movie, The Birth of a Nation, is based upon a book called The Klansman. The Klansman by a man named Thomas Dixon, okay? And uh, it was a novel, okay? The novel was turned into a play. In 1906, this play is showing in Philadelphia. There were 3,000 African-Americans who protested this play because we knew that it was detrimental to our existence. We knew it was dehumanizing. We understood it was a threat to us, okay? And if you read, um, if you look at Before the Mayflower, this is my copy, sixth edition, Before the Mayflower by Lerone Bennett Jr., A History of Black America. It's, it's a beat up copy, I know. I have to get a new copy of it, all right? But if you go back, one of the reasons why this book is so important is because in the back of the book, he has a chronology 
of 400, 400 years of history. And he breaks down the history each year. So you look at a chronology of history, right? Okay, so if we go and look at 1906, okay, um, very quickly here. If we go back and look at 1906, October 22nd, 1906, right here. I've got it highlighted. October 22nd, 1906, okay? What happened? And we'll come to some of your comments here in just a minute. Those that, who, who's on here from Detroit and also African-American business owners, post the name of your business here on the thread of the broadcast. We'll let you know how you can advertise with the African History Network because we can get your ads up today because I'm editing uh, some of our broadcasts that we're going to be putting, putting your uh, commercials in. October 22nd, 1906, 3,000 blacks demonstrated and rioted in Philadelphia to protest a theatrical presentation of Thomas Dixon's The Klansman, okay? See, we, see we, we, used to, we, used, we had a better understanding of when we were under attack, okay? Read this right here. 3,000, October 22nd, 1906, 3,000 blacks demonstrated, okay? in Philadelphia against uh, the theatrical presentation of Thomas Dixon's The Klansman. This was the play, okay? We understood that this was detrimental to our existence. And then when the movie The Birth of a Nation comes out in 1915, the NAACP led protests against this movie because we understood this was detrimental to us. We understood the images that, because see the movie show all the negative stereotypical images of African-Americans in that movie, okay? And it showed us as being ignorant, being slaves, things like this. And even during Reconstruction era, 1865 to 1877, it, it dehumanized the African-American legislator, legislators. Okay, the Congress, things like this. It depicted them. It showed them in a movie eating fried chicken and in Congress. It, it, it was totally dehumanizing. We understood we were under attack. So the NAACP led protests against this movie. William Monroe Trotter, when it comes to Boston, he led protests against this movie as well. There was a there was a documentary dealing with William Monroe Trotter. And uh, I think I have the information here. I talked about it when I used to do uh, uh, Steve Hood's show, uh, Wake Up With Steve Hood on 9, 10 a.m. The Superstation uh, on uh, every Thursday morning, 7 a.m. I, I talked about this. But there was a documentary. Here's my information on William Monroe Trotter. This was a bad brother. He was a bit of a sexist. And I'm just going to tell you right now, he's a bit of a sexist. That's why he and Ida B. Wells didn't get along very well, because he didn't believe that women belong in the organizations. OK, so he and Ida B. Wells didn't get along well. But, you know, there's a there's a history of African-American, some African-American male leaders being sexist. I'm just keeping it real. Dr. King was one of them. A lot of people don't want to talk about it. And this is not an attack on Dr. King. This is I mean, we, we have to keep it real. OK, and this is why Dr. King and, I, and, and Ella Baker didn't get along very well, because Ella Baker, because Dr. King did not believe that women belong in leadership positions in the movement. So Ella Baker had a acting leadership position in the movement. I think she was acting executive director or something like that. But she didn't get, not get the permanent position because he didn't believe that women belong in leadership positions like that in the movement. and so. This is this is the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, right? That she helped to co-found. And this is why she left the SCLC. Now, this ain't an attack on Dr. King, but we, we have to be honest and tell the truth. He was a bit of a sexist. OK, a lot, a lot of people don't want to bring that up. But th there's a history of some of uh, African-American male leaders being sexist, even towards women in the movement. And we, we saw that tension between William Monroe Trotter and Ida B. Wells going back to the 1900s, early 1900s, late, late 1800s, because you had the Afro-American Council founded in 1898. You had the Niagara Movement in 1905. The Niagara Movement of 1905, which was the precursor to the NAACP, came out of another organization called the Afro-American Council founded in 1898 by T. Thomas Fortune and Bishop Alexander Walters. 
So this is not an attack on anybody. But we also need to be honest about this and check ourselves and realize that we, we within our organizations, right, we can't have sexism within our organizations. And at the same time, we can't have um, African-American men being persecuted coming from white feminism that's infused into the organizations by African-American women. They, they, they can't have that either, you know? So we have to, we have to be honest about these things, all right? And, that, and, and when, I, when I talk about white feminism, what I'm saying is, is I'm not saying that women don't deserve equal rights. I'm not saying African-American women don't deserve equal rights. What I'm saying is we have to understand where all this stuff is coming from. Because the sexism that many African-American men operate based upon, and, and when you study the, if you actually study the history of the civil rights movement, this was one of the criticisms of the civil rights movement. It was largely led, it was largely led by African-American men who were, many of them ministers, Protestant ministers, and a lot of them were sexist, okay? But where did they learn it from? Because this is what is largely taught to us in this white dominated society. So what I'm saying is we need to, we need to get rid of all of that because it, 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 it divides African-American men and African-American women against each other. This is what, this is what I'm saying. Okay. So very quickly here, if we look at, um, AtlantaBlackStar.com had a really good article, February 14, 2017, Valentine's Day, but also the assumed birthday of Frederick Douglass, because Frederick Douglass didn't know his birthday because he didn't know which year he was born in and he didn't know the day he was born. OK, um, so he assumed February 14th as his birthday. How William Monroe Trotter's boycott of the birth of a nation led the foundation for the civil rights movement. How William Monroe Trotter's boycott of the birth of a nation led the foundation for the civil rights movement. So there was a documentary that aired on PBS back in February, 2017 called Birth of a Movement. Some of you all saw that documentary, Birth of a Movement. It was from Independent Lens. And it was about William Monroe Trotter and his fight against the movie, The Birth of a Nation. On Saturday evening, April 17th, 1915, the editor of the Boston Garden, Guardian, William Monroe Trotter, and a dozen or so mostly black men and women from the Boston branch of the NAACP walked in lockstep toward the city's Tremont Theater. They had been spurred by the arrival of the first picture show to be screened. They call them picture shows back in the day. The, the, they, 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 they had been spurred by the arrival of the first picture show to be screened inside the White House walls, D.W. Griffith's medium bending film, Birth of a Nation, a movie William Monroe Trotter found vile and detrimental to the sensibilities and progress of Negroes nationwide. William, William Monroe Trotter and his cohort were determined to disrupt the viewing of the movie and entered the lobby to buy tickets to the film. Stopping the viewing was part of a two-month campaign by William Monroe Trotter and other black organizations to have the film censored, okay? The Birth of a Nation was adapted from the, from the best-selling book, The Klansman. It was lauded by white film critics as a cinematic master, masterwork, pushing film at the time from a low excursion into an art form with its use of multiple cameras, close-ups, fadeaway shots, and sweeping battle scenes, okay? The movie revolutionized filmmaking at the time. The, uh, the, the movie was three hours in length. It was the longest movie at the time, the most expensive movie at the time. $100,000 it cost to make it. Before D.W. Griffith, audiences would only see shots of short, funny scenes, loosely connected, if at all. D.W. Griffith envi envisioned telling stories by editing and weaving them into what would become the first full-length feature film in cinematic history. Birth of a Nation tells a revisionist history of the American Civil War by portraying Reconstruction 
as a world turned upside down with Southern whites trapped under a brutal, oppressive black yoke, Y-O-K-E, after the freed slaves take over state government. In the film, black lawmakers uh, who were drunk on moonshine while eating fried chicken pass pro-miscegenation laws to legally get their hands on white women. Miscegenation laws were laws that made it illegal for um, African Americans and white people to intermix, to marry, to even even have sex. Okay, because they're trying to preserve, they're trying to uh, preserve the white bloodline, preserve genetic white survival. Okay, these these were miscegenation laws. All right, so in the movie they show black men lawmakers trying to pass laws that make it legal for blacks and whites to marry because they're saying these black men male lawmakers they want to get their hands on white women this is what's portrayed in the movie that was shown all across the country it was shown at the white house for president woodrow wilson okay so we understood now here's the naacp leading protest against this movie this this movie came out seven years before the attack on black wall street this is why you have to understand the chronology of history historical events don't happen in a vacuum they are the they are the result of a sequence of historical events that take place that lead to a larger event happen this is why you have to understand history so when this movie came out and it showed the ku klux klan as the heroes there was a huge resurgence in the ku klux klan so much so that in many newspapers where they had ads promoting the movie the birth of a nation the ku klux klan would oftentimes take out recruiting ads next to the ad for the movie the birth of a nation so here you have the naacp leading protests against this movie because we understood how detrimental it is it was to our people and how dehumanizing it was Today, the same NAACP gives image awards to the TV show Empire, which to me is the birth of a nation of its day because it shows dehumanizing, negative, stereotypical images of African Americans as well. Okay? A hundred years ago, 104 years ago now, the NAACP led protests against the same thing. Today, they give image awards to the TV show Empire. Who would figure that? Who would figure that? Most people aren't even making the connection because they don't understand history. They don't understand. No, we used to protest stuff like that. All right. So once again, how's everybody doing? This is Michael M. Hotel, host of the African History Network show, founder of the African History Network. I'm a talk show host, researcher, lecturer, and writer. African American History Month is coming up. I'm doing a uh, lecture series in Detroit each Saturday in February, starting February 2nd, February 2nd, 2019, 2 p.m. to um, 6 p.m. at Nandy's Knowledge Cafe, located to her new location is 71 Oakman Avenue in Highland Park, Michigan, which is right inside of Detroit, okay? So it's a free event, donations accepted, come on out. Um, this presentation, uh, the, pre the first presentation I'm doing, February 2nd, is called Black Wall Street from Destruction to the Resurrection of Economic Empowerment. Black Wall Street from Destruction to the Resurrection of Economic Empowerment, okay? And it's about a two and a half, three hour presentation. I deal with a lot of history. This is some of the history I deal with because I deal with a timeline of history leading up to the attack on Black Wall Street, June 1st, 1921. OK, so we could put things in a historical perspective. And then also in the presentation, I'm going to deal with some of our history of cooperative economics, because we have a rich history of practicing, engaging in cooperative economics, various uh, organizations like the Free African Society or the Colored, Far Colored Farmers Union, the Colored Merchants Association. We have a rich history of that. But what's happened is, is that a capitalism has been promoted to us. And even though we're going to engage in capitalism to a certain to a certain extent right the the co-ops that we had are usually not talked about in our history and we had co-ops going back even during slavery okay uh we have a long history of cooperative economics and these are principles we brought with us from africa 
So I'm going to talk uh, some about that as well, okay? We'll have a flyer up at our website, africanhistorynetwork.com soon. Uh, how's everybody doing? And uh, we know the attack on uh, 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 Jesse's small aid took place uh, yesterday, and I, I covered that story. We'll, we'll have an update to that as well. Um, and okay, so if you want to, so if you like this type of information, you want to donate to the African History Network, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show, okay? And uh, that helps us to put on events like this because even though it's free to the public, I still have to pay for the venue, I still have expenses I have to cover. Um, and then also, uh, you can um, also donate at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, all right? We have a Facebook event invite. Uh, right here on our fan page, the African History Network says Black Wall Street. Uh, so check that out as well. And uh, African American business owners, post the name of your business here on the thread of the broadcast and uh, let us know how. Uh, and uh, email us at customer service at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. We'll let you know how you can advertise with the African History Network also. Um, let's go to some of your comments here. And I'll post a link if you want to order the uh, DVD lecture. Um, the DVD lecture I did dealing with the history of Black Wall Street. Uh, we'll post that link here also for you. It's at our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Uh, and that information will blow you away. Uh, let's see who we have here. Uh, Jerry, uh, while profound thought regarding empire, I've never watched an entire episode. Maybe I innately knew it was not something I needed to see. And the way they hook you with the TV show Empire is through the music. This is how they hook you. You know, I'm not I'm not a fan of Lee Daniels at all. People who follow me know me because if you if you go back and you uh, you watch the you, you go read the New York Times article from I think it's 2010 or 2009 called the the uh, audacity the audacity of precious. This is an interview uh, with Lee Daniels. OK, and go read that the audacity of precious. Right. And then you can you can you you, you can see is something wrong with him. He needs some help, all right? Um, but uh, I'm not, the movie Precious, the movie The Butler, all that. And he was a, he was a producer. Let me see. He was the director of the movie Precious. He was a producer on the film Monsters Ball, okay? And, um, yeah, it's, it's just a bunch of garbage. Okay. Martel says, speaking of Empire, police can't find any evidence of Jesse Smollett's attack. Uh, they say he might be lying. Uh, we posted a story about that. Um, so um, I don't know what's going to happen there. Um, I hope things happen the way he said that they happen. Okay. Uh, let me see here. Let me, are we still on? Can you all still hear me? Let me see here. I'm trying to monitor this. So, okay. Yeah, I, I posted an article from BlackAmericaWeb.com about that, and I was also reading an article from uh, CNN. Uh, so we'll see what we, we'll see what happens with that. But in the broadcast that I did yesterday, this is one of the reasons why I said if uh, things happen the way he said that they happen. Okay, this is one of the reasons why I said that. Okay, and this is not anything against him. Is that I've been doing? This is my ninth year doing radio. Okay, I do radio on 9, 10 a.m. the Superstation WFDF. Okay, Sundays 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. This is my ninth year doing radio. I've covered hundreds and hundreds of cases. Probably, th well, I've covered thousands of stories, but hundreds of different types of cases. And I know that once they do an investigation, sometimes it's not what was originally presented. Okay, so we have to see what happens. I hope he, I hope everything is the way he said it is. And I'm saying I'm not saying it's not, but I'm saying that's why you do investigations. Okay, uh, Mike, have you, Mike? People have never been prosecuted for the color of their, I guess, skin. That's why racial equality feels like oppression to them. Well, he said white people have never been persecuted for the color of their skin. Okay, uh, okay, Nat said so we heard we he, we hear you. Uh, I believe these race riots made black people afraid to economically stick together because they were used by white people to stop our progress. That's what Mike uh, Bledsoe said. Well, we still had 
economic progress after those various race riots. What happened was the U.S. Interstate Highway uh, Act of 1952 and 1956 drove expressways through the African-American community. And um, what that did, what, what that did was wiped out a lot of our businesses and a lot of our homes. OK, and this is taking place during the civil rights movement. So we I mean. You know, we, we, we may say, oh, well, this, you know, these race riots made us afraid to have economic powerhouses like Black Wall Street, things like this. But we rebuilt Black Wall Street after the race riot with our own dollars. So Black Wall Street was not destroyed, contrary to popular belief. It was badly damaged, but we rebuilt it. But oftentimes what I find is that we would rather talk about the destruction that happened than talk about the resurrects, talk about that we rebuilt it. Which, which, which shows the tenacity and the spirit of African people. Okay, uh, let's see here. Tiffany said, wow, deep, uh, okay. What year was that law passed? Which law are you referring to, Martel? Are you referring to the Black Freedmen Indian Treaties of 1866? Is that what you're referring to? Which law are you referring to? All right, Guy, um, Jerry said they simply may not have liked women. I'm just saying, but by the way, what Greek fraternity did both of these men belong to which two men now dr king was a member of alpha phi alpha fraternity just like dick gregory um which other man are you talking to jerry they may not have liked women okay dr king liked women um no you you have to deal with the, the you have to deal with white male patriarchy and white male chauvinism that is taught in this culture in this society and then african-american men largely are taught that and when you study the when you study the history of the christian church you see it's it, you see it was men in control first white men then when we have the different protestant dominations and you have african-americans setting up their own churches right these Protestant churches, they're taking some of the same, uh, they're bringing some of that same mentality into those churches. So this is why you largely didn't have um, black women who were ministers or black women who were pastors, okay? You may have had a few, but that was like, back in the 60s, that was rare. That was really rare. Okay, Greg Osborne in uh, Oklahoma City. Would you come to a small town like Lewisburg, Tennessee to help our people understand that part of Maryland? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, inbox me here on Facebook or email me at info at africanhistorynetwork.com, I-N-F-O, info at africanhistorynetwork.com. We can make it happen. I heard Black Panther was nominated but didn't get an award. Well, First of all, the, grant, the Oscars have not happened. Black Panther won big at the Screen Actors Guild Award. That's why they're bringing it back uh, in the theaters for free, February 1st to February 7th. Black, Black Panther won big at the Screen Actors Guild Award. So that's, that's not true. All right, going through some of your uh, questions here. Trotter, William Monroe Trotter. Now, I'm not sure, I, I, I don't know if William Monroe Trotter belonged to a uh, fraternity, okay, I, I, I don't know. I know he graduated from Harvard, but I don't know if he belonged to a fraternity. Maybe he did, I'm not sure. All right, okay, and then also um, we have the, uh, you can uh, register for the online courses that I teach also, we have them on demand. Um, it's a uh, 10 course online bundle pack. Um, let me tell you, I'm, I'm looking at William Monroe Trotter here to see if he belonged to, okay, so Phi Beta, Phi Beta Kappa, but that Phi Beta Kappa is a honor society. That's an honors fraternity, which is different 
than like um, the Divine Nine, Kappa Alpha Psi Phi Beta Sigma Alpha Phi Alpha. That is different. So he was a member of uh, Kappa Alpha. He was a member of, of Phi Beta Kappa, okay, fraternity, but that's an honor society. Uh, so I'm just trying to check this here. Yeah, okay. Yeah, biography.com has a has an article on, uh, I think I read this already also, on uh, William Monroe Trotter, okay? But when you go through and study this history, see a people's history and culture teaches them how to deal with the problems of the past in the present and the future to meet the needs of the community. When you go through and study this history, right? You, you, you learn that the um, a lot of these things that we just largely accept today, we used to fight against. Like, if we go back to 1915, <clears throat> how do we think they would have dealt with negative corporate control hip hop like we find today? And they're and they're and they're calling their women all type of derogatory names and have them run around half naked, things like that. You think they would have tolerated that? There was, we had more respect for ourselves back at that time. And this is during, this is during segregation. This is 1915, this is the second year that the US is involved in World War I. This is during segregation. 1915 was also the 50 year anniversary or the, uh, 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 yeah, the 50th anniversary of the Civil War ending in 1865 as well. And you had, after the Civil War ends, you had the South making the argument that slavery should be brought back and slavery was a, uh, a good system because the argument the South made was that slavery had a system of checks and balances. And it kept the Africans enslaved. It took care of them, provided food and clothing and shelter for them, as opposed to having them out on their own because they made the argument that the Africans cannot survive on their own. They were dim-witted, childlike, things like this. But also, they made the argument that they would turn to criminality, things like this, right? So the South made the argument that the slavery had a system, a, a system of checks and balances, and they made the argument that slavery was good for everybody, including those that they enslaved, because they said, we take care of them. So uh, this is why it's important to understand this history. OK. All right. So we'll post the link to um, the uh, lecture that I have also, because uh, we have it on DVD as well. This is the lecture I'm doing uh, at Nandy's Knowledge Cafe, Saturday, February 2nd, to kick off uh, 2019, uh, 2 p.m. to 6 p.m., to kick off our uh, African-American History Month lecture series, okay? And uh, another lecture, I'm, I'm laying out what I'm gonna cover each, uh, each Saturday. But another lecture I'm gonna do is dealing with the history of the Rosewood Massacre of 1923. That's gonna be another one, the Rosewood Massacre of 1923. And then um, I'm also gonna do one dealing with the um, Tuskegee Experiment of Untreated Syphilis on the Negro Male. The Tuskegee Experiment of Untreated Syphilis on the Negro Male, okay? Um, and that was supposed to be a six to nine month study. And it ended up lasting 40 years. And there's a whole story behind that. I've researched that. So I'm working on putting together all these presentations for the um, lecture series I'm doing. So uh, if you know people in Detroit, let them know about this. We have the Facebook event invite here on our Facebook uh, fan page, the African History Network. We'll get the flyer up at our website, africanhistorynetwork.com. And then also the city of Inkster, Michigan. If you, if you heard the African History Network show Sunday night, saw the Facebook Live broadcast, um, you, 
you heard me interview Councilwoman Sandra Watley. In the city of Inkster, Michigan, they have programs, events for each day of African American History Month, 28 days, okay? So the, their gala kicks off, they, they have an uh, African American History Month gala that kicks off Friday, February 1st. Uh, it's like 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. I'm trying to see if she has a flyer for it. Uh, she sent me the um, calendar, and I need to bring that up. She sent me the calendar. If you inbox me, I'll give you the information because I don't I don't have it right in front of me right now. Um, the uh, the address of it, but I talked about it uh, Sunday night on the African History Network show. So we have the uh, is we have the click on videos here on our Facebook fan page, the African History Network. You can go back and watch it from um, uh, that was January twenty seventh. Okay. All right, we just posted a link here to the uh, DVD lecture that I have done with the history of Black Wall Street. I'm also in the documentary from uh, Boyce Watkins and Your Black World Films, Resurrecting Black Wall Street, The Blueprint. We did that back in like 2015, 2014, 2015. I think the new one came out in either 2015 or 2016, they redid it. So that's the, uh, so I'm in that one. We have that at our website also. When you speak, brother, I learn you have that gift. Thank you, Cameron Brown. Okay, thanks, Cameron. All right, so look, guys, uh, let me see. Hold on. Angie said, Trail of Tears would be an interesting topic. African Americans were there and endured hardships. I talk about the Trail of Tears some in the Black Wall Street presentation because it ties into the history of Black Wall Street. Okay. Also, I'm going to do one this month dealing with. Um, I'm gonna do one dealing with uh, the history of the history of African American History Month and uh, Dr. Carter G. Woodson because a lot of people celebrate uh, this monthly celebration but don't understand the history of how it came into existence. All right, so that's coming up also. We were slaves for 300 years. The moment we were free, now we're lazy. Okay, can't trust the judgment or words from a culture that perpetually runs from truth. Yeah, it's 246 years in the in the British colonies um, here in the U.S. 246 years. Okay, uh, and then also, you know, we posted this uh, yesterday. We have the um, We, we have the, was it, eight DVD bundle pack, Breaking the Chains, eight DVD bundle pack. Yeah, let me post this here. Because uh, this includes my presentation dealing with the history of African American History Month also. That's an eight DVD bundle pack, eight of my lectures. That's on sale $50. Uh, I think it's regularly 80, something like that, 80, 90 dollars. But uh, check that out also. You can order that as well. All right, if you want me to do a presentation for your group or organization, email me at uh, info, I-N-F-O, at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, info, I-N-F-O, at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, uh, or go to our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. You can email me through the website also. I speak at churches, speak at schools, et cetera. I'm speaking at a church February 17th. I have to uh, find out the name of the church. I forgot. I forgot the name of the church. Uh, and I just spoke at Second Baptist Church for Dr. King Day, January 21st as well. Some of you all saw that broadcast uh, that we put here on our fan page, the African History Network. There needs to be a movie made about Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, and Black Wall Street, Anthony said, John, now last I heard John Legend is working on a project dealing with that also, okay? All right, so look, we have to get out of here. Hey, remember at the African History Network, we focus on educating, empowering, and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world. Because right now it's correct your own behavior, what you do for yourself, what you do to yourself, and what you allow other people to do to you and get away with. It's based upon what you think about yourself. Um, I'll see you at Nandy's Knowledge Cafe each Saturday in February, 2019, 2 p.m. to 6 p.m., 71 Oakman Avenue, 71 Oakman Avenue, free event, donations accepted. And uh, right now it's correct wrong behavior. It's not over until we win. Wakanda forever. We'll talk to you next time. Peace.